What's up YouTube, AS Jets coming at you with another video today. As you guys know, we just recently hit 1,000 subscribers, so thank you all so very much for that. I couldn't think of a special video to do on short notice, so I thought, you know what, I might as well do a video on one of my first models, and that's what we're doing today. So this is the Gemini Jets KLM Boeing 777-300ER in the old livery. This is one of my first models that I ever got uh, in 1-400 scale. I have had a few other models before this, a few scale models before this one, but they were not 1400 scale. This is probably the second 1400 scale model that I ever got. The first one I think was the Gemini Jets United 767 in the Tulip livery. Um, and I think this was either, I can't remember if this was the first or second one, but this was one of the first 1400 scale models I've ever gotten. Again, also one of the first Gemini Jets models I've ever gotten. And uh, it is actually the only one I still have from back then, uh, one for hundred speed, uh, one for hundred scale wise. I have a bunch of like other scales, like one two fifty, one three fifty scale models that I still have from like 2010, 2011. I've shown those in the collection videos on my uh, main channel. But this is the only remaining. Uh, this is the oldest one for hundred scale model in my collection, and this is from 2011 when I got this. Like I probably already mentioned. Uh, but the model itself is a 2008 release, so it's a OG model. It's been through a lot, and uh, we'll go through everything when I, you know, when we get started with the review. So, uh, yeah, in terms of special videos for 1K, I was trying to get my uh, first impression unboxing episode three out. I was hoping for this week or the week uh, or previous week, but Panda Fox Toys—they're freaking taking forever to ship my stuff. Um, they had a model, one of, one of the models I ordered from them was apparently on pre-order and they never told me because on the website it said in stock yet they never updated it so when I ordered it I thought it was in stock but they didn't tell me until like three weeks later that it was still on pre-order so they said another week but I don't know when those models will get here it's like I think three four models I bought from them uh, this is supposed to get here probably next week or the week after so that video is delayed, but hopefully it'll be well worth the wait. Until now, this is the best I could do to improvise. Uh, and if you have any other ideas, let me know, but this is what I can do for now. So yeah, let's get started with the, revi with the review. Um, this is like a new setting I'm using, mainly because I don't have the box for this thing. I, I think I threw it away. I don't know why, I was a little kid, I didn't think much, but yeah. I threw away the box, sadly, sorry to say. Um, and this little platform, I've had this for about four years. This is actually like a Taekwondo board that I broke back in like 2016 or whatever, 2015. Um, I broke that, you know, I had to punch it or whatever. Um, and I ended up gluing it back together and put a foil on it and I use it for reviews. So I don't know if I'll do, I'll do this in the future, but I'm just doing it for now because why not? I mean, actually I might use it for future videos. You know what? Because it's white anyway down here. Nobody likes that. So we're just going to use this for future videos. All right. Anyway, let's get started with the uh, review. Okay, so we got the cockpit windows uh, there, Sky Team logo, the name of the aircraft, which is National Park de Hoge Velue. Um I definitely pronounced that wrong, but uh, basically KLM, for those that don't know, they name all of their planes after certain things. Uh, for example, the 777-300ERs, they're all named after um, national parks around the world, um, like the 777-200 uh, aircraft, they are named after notable like historical figures in the A330s are named after landmarks um, 737s are named after bird species 747s they're named after world cities you know so on so on so yeah that's just some knowledge that I have for KLM because um, KLM is one of the airlines like I've always been fascinated with growing up um, and they continue to have one of my favorite liveries I really love the KLM livery um, but yeah they're an airline that I've always had an interest in so I know quite a bit, not a lot, but I know some cool stuff about KLM, so. And we got the Air France KLM, uh, you know, logo down there, because Air France KLM, they've had a big partnership that's been lasting for the last long time, actually. Uh, and then the nose, again, just some more details. You got VA, which is the last two letters of the registration above the windows, the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, and then you can see some paint chips there on the nose. Um, so of course, this is the older Gemini Jets mold, 777 mold, from 2008, and I definitely prefer this one a little more. I don't know why, I just feel like everything was so good back then, the proportions, 
the engines, everything was so good. Um, and of course the landing gear, these are not the Gemini, it's landing gear. Uh, it's a long story, I'll go into that later on. Uh, but yeah, here we got the L1 and L2 doors, KLM titles here, or the logo I should say. Uh, Royal Dutch Airlines, uh, that would be business class over here, and then premium economy, economy, whatever. Um, the GE 9115B engines with the KLM logo again on the outside and on the inboard side, if you can see it down there. And then, speaking of inboard, you got the inboard landing light on both sides. Fan blades, pretty basic, not much else to say about those. And then there's the overwing exit there for the 777-300ER. And then the wings, very nicely detailed. You got the egress arrows and all the markings and the control surfaces. And the beacon lights there, little satcom which is just painted on. Since Gemini just didn't have the, they didn't do the 3D like antennas and satcom stuff back then. Uh, and then we have, of course, the rake wingtip with the 777-300ER. Same basic wing design they use on the uh, 200LRs. Okay, sorry about that, I was getting some text messages. Uh, so we got the uh, L4 door here and the aft door back here. The full registration, which is PHBVA, Papa Hotel, Bravo, Victor Alpha. Fun fact, of course, this was the first 777 delivered, uh, 777-300ER delivered to KLM back in 2008. So this model was actually, and this model actually was released shortly before KLM took delivery. So it was, it was released actually a little months, a few months before KLM took delivery of it. So yeah, that's one fun fact. And then another fun fact is that this is actually the Orange Pride livery. This aircraft nowadays wears the Orange Pride livery, which is just like orange front here. Um, so it's no longer in this livery, but there are, I think, two KLM 777-300ERs still in the old livery PHBVI, and I think PHBVK or BVG, one of, one of those two. But there's two of them left in the old livery, so not many. Um, but there's way more 200ERs still left in the old livery, so yeah. Uh, Anyway, on to the tail. You got the KLM, of course, logo, the OG logo of KLM on the tail. This logo has stayed with KLM since they were first incorporated over 100 years ago. And uh, yeah, they've just had this logo for years. I mean, it's been tweaked a little bit, but this KLM like crown logo, that has been there for ever. So, and it hasn't changed, which is really cool. And you got the horizontal stabilizers here, APU, tail cone, and as you can see, this stabilizer fell off shortly after I bought it back in 2011. This one came off, and I remember, I remember gluing it. So that's cool. If I didn't mention it, you got Boeing 777 written there, the Netherlands flag, the European Union flag. And one funny thing about Caleb, I always liked this, was that the Flying Dutchman, they always put that on their planes. And uh, back when I was little, I always thought that was pretty funny how they had that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't think that's their slogan. It's just like some sort of unofficial slogan they have on their planes. Um, all right, on to the uh, right side. And there are some differences. I think one main thing is the name of the plane is in English. On the left, shoot. On the left side, it was in uh, Dutch. This side, it's in English. So we have De Hoog Villeroy National Park. On the other side, it just said um, it was in Dutch, so it was the other way around. Uh, National Park de Hogevelue, so yeah. And we have the cargo door in the front there. And then the two in the back. And you can see the registration kind of chipping away, sadly. But it's lasted, surprisingly, I've had this model for, what, almost 10 years now? And it's uh, maintained, you know, the paint has stuck on there really good. I mean, I've had other Geminitis models, like my, uh, this one, the United 320, I've had that for about uh, seven years, and already the paint is starting to fade away, sadly. But this one is way older. It's been on the market for 12 years since it came out in 2008, and it's still doing really well. So yeah, and then onto the underbelly, not, nothing much to see down here. You have, you can barely see, it says 777-300ER on the front. It's really faded, and you can see the nose gear doors, nose gear, uh, there used to be, I think I, I tried painting the gear doors on when I was little, so recently I painted over that, that's why it looks really white. Stand hole, the registration again, and the landing gear, which I'll 
explain why they look so different later. Um, the Ram Air Turbine, which is that little rectangle there, and then that's basically it. So yeah. All right, so um, the top, nobody cares. All right, um, the landing gear. Why do they look so different? Why is it not the actual Gemini Jets landing gear? So basically, like I said, I got this model in 2011. I believe shortly after I got it back in like 2012 or 2013, one of the gears fell off, one of the nose gears fell off, uh, the tires fell off. And I tried fixing it with the spare Dragon Wings tire and it didn't look good. One tire was bigger than the other. So I was like, you know what, I am a genius, I'm going to take all of the wheels off. So I took all the landing gear off, uh, main gear and nose gear, and for almost like what, eight, no maybe seven, eight years, this model sat without landing gear. If you guys are subscribed to my main channel, if you guys have seen my uh, collection updates, you probably know that uh, I've shown this model in the past, um, and you guys probably might remember it didn't have landing gear. So up until a few months ago, I decided to restore it. I tried restoring it, and what I did was that I took some landing gear off of a Dragon Wings PIA 777 because I have two of them. I got um, I got two. I got one of this. I think it was this one actually. Uh, I got this one a few months back just because why not? Um, and I was like, I'm gonna put that model for display in my room with that landing gear. So I took the gear off of that one and glued it onto this one. Hopefully that makes sense. And it was really hard. Believe me, it was it was tough um, because Dragon Wings, of course, their proportions are a bit different than Gemini Jets's. So it was a challenge to get these gear in, man. Let me actually show you guys um, on the other side. It's probably a bit better. So, um, as you can see, the landing gear doors, the nose gear doors, and of course you won't fo Bro, focus my... Thank you. Please? Please, thank you. Um, the nose gear doors, they're actually made out of cardboard. Cardstock, not cardboard. Cardstock paper, which I glued in there. And that was pretty easy. And this was the, the nose gear was easy, bro. I just took the nose gear and I just glued it in there. It stuck easily. So that was that. Was that. These, this was hard. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the proportions for Gemini Jets and Dragon Wings is landing gear, they're different. So at first, um, the gear struts, they were way too big for the Gemini Jets slot. So as you can see, I had to like cut off part of it, part of the gear struts. To make sure they fit and they still don't fit all the way you can see it on that one if you look closely you can see it doesn't fully fit it's still like a bit it's uh doesn't go all the way in on both sides but it is stuck there it's glued there so it won't come off but it doesn't fit all the way in the little slot um, so that was a big challenge for me I spent a good like 20 30 minutes trying to fit those in there and finally it worked the glue stuck and the model was fixed and now it does, it just doesn't come off, which is really good. Hopefully I don't jinx it, but yeah, it's stuck in there. Glue is doing its job, which is really good, and the model is restored. So I was really happy when I was able to fix it back up again. And, you know, I'm able to use it in my model airports. And unfortunately, it won't be too relevant for much longer because KLM, like I said, they don't, they don't have many of these left. They only have two of them left in the old livery. The rest are in the new livery, and there's one in the Sky Team livery, and one in the Orange Pride livery, which ironically is this exact plane. But... Um, yeah, but there's still two left. I don't know what the word is on them repainting those two, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's that. So that's basically it for this review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's way longer than my previous ones, but rightfully so, because this is such an amazing, uh, such a special plane to me. And, you know, KLM is an airline I've always admired growing up. I've never flown them. I would love to one day, you know, um, but yeah, KLM's, I just... Their livery is one of my favorites on the 777. Uh, and in general, comment below what you guys like better. To me, it's kind of hard because both the new livery and old livery look really good. I can't decide which one I like more. Um, but yeah, they just got a really stunning livery and I love I love it. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys thought. If you, guys any, if you got any suggestions for uh, 1,000 subscriber specials, comment those below. But that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.